Hello! In this short video I will provide a little overview of why heat mats are a bad primary heat source for reptiles and why you should probably stop using them as such if you are currently doing so. This is basically a kind of spin-off of the video I made about my deep heat projector. But first off, I don't want to shame anyone for using heat mats. Looking around online, you will see that they are considered to be a totally acceptable way of heating an enclosure in the mainstream reptile hobby, and you will find a multitude of sources recommending them. I myself didn't know much about their issues until quite recently when I decided to go on a deep dive into the subject of reptile heating after upgrading my ball python terrarium. Also, when I refer to the reptile hobby, I am mainly referring to snake keeping as this is where I have done the most research. However, snakes aren't the only reptiles that people like to keep on heat mats, so the misconceptions I address in this video may also be relevant to other keepers. So let's get into the main issues, shall we? When researching heat mats, you will often find the term belly heat being thrown around. Apparently this is a super beneficial kind of warmth that replicates the heat from below a reptile will encounter in the wild, such as when they lie on a slab of rock that was heated up by the sun. There appears to be this belief in some corners of the hobby that this kind of heat source is somehow the best and most important for reptile well-being. Well, let me tell you why this is pseudoscientific nonsense. While reptiles can and will benefit from belly heat in the wild, this is absolutely not the primary source of heat they will encounter in their environment. I mean, let's think about this for more than two seconds. Where does almost all heat on the Earth's surface come from originally? That's right, the sun, in form of solar radiation. Now, unless you're some kind of weird crab or something living at the bottom of the ocean next to a hydrothermal vent, in which case congratulations on accessing YouTube from there, you need solar radiation to live and survive. It regulates your day and night cycle and key metabolic processes, and if you are a reptile, you also rely on its warmth to regulate your own body temperature. So where does solar radiation come from? Above. Reptiles are evolutionarily adapted to absorb most of the heat they require from top-down sources. And yes, this also includes nocturnal species. Even if you're hiding away for most of the day, the heat that you will receive will still come from above. Also, nocturnal species can and will occasionally bask out in the open. In the wild, if an animal wants to escape the heat, it will typically hide under something or burrow, which is why using a heat pad is super unnatural, as it provides the opposite kind of thermal gradient. Also, just a side note, back when I was using a heat mat, I always had massive problems keeping the temperature consistent despite having a thermostat, as I felt like it was always dependent on the amount and type of substrate that was layered on top of it. But maybe that's just me. Again, belly heat and heat transfer through sources such as convection and conduction also exist in nature, but these are secondary heat sources that originate from the heat produced by solar radiation. By providing a top-down heat source to warm your enclosure, you will also heat up the elements within it, thus also providing the secondary heat sources and the oh-so-important belly heat. Let us get into the main issue I have with heat mats, which is not quite as straightforward as my previous point. Basically, unlike solar radiation, the kind of heat that is emitted by a heat mat does not allow a reptile to warm its body up very efficiently. Now bear with me because we have to get a bit physics-y to explain why. If we look at the spectrum of solar radiation that arrives on Earth, we will see a wide range of wavelengths, ranging from UV over visible light to infrared radiation. Now the heat on Earth is primarily the product of infrared radiation, which makes up around half of all energy that we receive from the sun. You can divide infrared radiation into three categories based on their wavelengths. You have infrared A, the shortest wavelength, then infrared B, and lastly infrared C, which features the longest wavelengths. The infrared waves from sunlight are primarily infrared A and infrared B. These waves are great for reptiles as they are able to penetrate all the way from the surface of the animal's skin down into their subcutaneous tissues, allowing them to efficiently warm their body all the way down to their core, which is important because that's where things like muscles and internal organs are. Now, heat mats also emit infrared radiation. Unfortunately, they do not emit infrared A or infrared B. Instead, they only emit infrared C. This is also the kind of heat ceramic heat emitters produce. The problem with infrared C is that it is unable to get past an animal's outer skin layer, as it is blocked by keratin, which is the primary component of the epidermis, aka your skin. 
This basically means that a reptile basking under a heat source emitting infrared C will not be able to warm its core efficiently. Instead, its skin will become increasingly hot while its inner tissues will not have warmed up sufficiently, making this a very suboptimal source of heat. And while this may still be sufficient to allow your animal to survive, I mean, just look at the countless pets being kept that way, I do not believe this kind of heating allows them to thrive, and do you really want to subject your pet to a lifetime of inefficient heating? Only because many reptile species are incredibly hardy and can be kept in extremely industrial conditions that fail to meet even the most basic animal welfare requirements doesn't mean that we should make these kinds of practices the standard. Here's a fun fact. Did you know that the number one cause of illness in captive reptiles is improper husbandry? I mean, if you look at the kind of care guides that are out there, it's not too surprising. Instead, we should aim to replicate an animal's natural environment as closely as possible, which includes emulating the kind of solar radiation and heat sources it would encounter in the wild. So if you have a heat mat, what can you do? Well, if you are able to, I would upgrade your animal to a heat lamp as the kind of heat they produce mimics the sun's heat most closely. Alternatively, you can go for a deep heat projector. While not as good as a heat lamp, it does emit infrared A and infrared B. I used a deep heat projector to replace the ceramic heat emitter in my ball python's terrarium, as my current setup does not allow for the installation of a heat lamp and dome, which is a project for a later stage. So to conclude, heat mats may allow your animal to survive, but they are a very unnatural and suboptimal heat source due to the fact that they emit heat from below and they only emit infrared C, which does not allow the reptile to warm its body efficiently. Therefore, they are not a good heat source and you should probably try and use something else. The end. <laughs>